a Western film directed by Henry Hathaway and starring Steve McQueen, Carl Malden, Brian Keith, Arthur Kennedy, and Suzanne Plachette hit the big screens in 1966. That movie was Nevada Smith. This well-knit Western has Steve McQueen playing the young, naive Max Sant, who finds his parents brutally murdered. He's determined to hunt the bandits down for revenge. Max embarks on a journey into the West that will change him forever. This movie opens with Steve McQueen's character, who's a half-breed, riding horses with three men, one played by Martin Landau, the other by Arthur Kennedy, and the third by Carl Malden. This trio pretends to be friends with Max's parents. The young boy shows them the way to the family ranch, and his parents are robbed, tortured, and killed by these three bandits. After discovering this horrible scene, Max burns the house down, and with $8 in his pocket and an old gun and a horse, he leaves everything behind to try to track down these killers. With the difficulty of crossing the desert, Max meets Jonas Cord, played by Brian Keith. He's an old gunsmith. He generously takes Max in and teaches him how to shoot and play cards, while at the same time giving him vital pieces of advice about the rough laws of the West. I find the film really pretty interesting because it's not just a story about revenge. It's more about self-discovery. It's expertly cut into several sections that reveal the progress of Max's maturity and his transformation from an innocent man into a cold-blooded killer. At the beginning of the journey, Max is a half-breed wearing moccasins who eventually turns into a confident man looking like a real cowboy. Brian Keith does an exceptional job of playing the good father figure showing sympathy for this young boy and teaching him the ways of the West. Their friendship is quite intriguing. The aesthetics of the movie are spectacular. That's where it really shines. The cinematography is remarkable, showing an incredible variety of Western landscapes, most of which were shot in the Inyo National Forest of Southern California but some scenes were also shot in the Alabama hills of the Sierra Nevada. It showcases the splendor of these two different locations. The character of Nevada Smith was supposed to be 16 years old. He's played by McQueen, who at that time was 35 years old. There are some real stretches with this character role, in that he's supposed to be a big part Indian. But the look of Steve McQueen doesn't lead you to think that way. This is one of the biggest drawbacks that I see in the casting of this film. It doesn't quite fit right here. If you can overlook this, it's a grand production. In the scene in the cattle pens where Max fights Jesse, played by Martin Landau, Max crouches behind a fence and opens the gate to let the cattle out. Some of the cattle come out the gate, while others knock down the fence, and Max must dodge the flailing legs and hooves of the stampeding cattle. This knocking down of the fence was entirely accidental, and Steve McQueen was very nearly trampled to death for real. The shots of Max rolling clear of the hooves were added later on when it was decided to use this accidental footage in the final production. Now look real closely, and you'll see a familiar face. She looks somewhat different, but it's the same lovely lady, Lonnie Anderson, best known for her role as the buxom blonde secretary, Jennifer Marlowe, in the long-running TV series, WKRP in Cincinnati, can be seen in a bit part as a brunette. She's one of the dance hall girls who greets the cowboys upstairs at the hotel while they're cleaning up for a night on the town. She has a very brief line in the film where she asks one of them, What's your name? Walter? Hello, Walter. Look closely for her presence or she'll slip right past you. The role of Nevada Smith was originally created by Alan Ladd in The Carpetbaggers from 1964. A prequel highlighting the Smith character with Ladd was proposed. 
but the actor's untimely death at the age of 50 precluded that. Now, a pretty interesting fact about two of the characters in the film is that Steve McQueen and Martin Landau were two of 2,000 performers that auditioned for Lee Strasberg's exclusive theater school in 1955. They were the only two that were accepted. The name of Nevada Smith was the original inspiration for the name Indiana Jones. The Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark from 1981's character name was originally Indiana Smith. George Lucas named him Indiana after his dog and Smith after this movie, but later on it was changed to Indiana Jones. Steve McQueen loved to play with props while he was in front of the camera. This made the audience keep their eyes on him. When Jonas gives him a silver dollar, McQueen slaps it back and forth in his hands. A lot of his co-stars didn't like this upstaging that he would do with the props. It annoyed many of them. Now the scene where Steve McQueen gets the chair slammed into his face was performed with a barrier of thick bulletproof glass that was positioned between McQueen and the chair. This greatly enhanced the impact of this scene and made it extremely realistic to the viewer, yet safe for McQueen to do. Look real closely and you can tell when the chair hits the glass. The casual watcher would never notice it. But you land em see goes there viewers would probably pick this out in an instant. Because most of you are like me. I love finding these little production highlights on how they created the magic. While doing a bit of the filming around Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Steve McQueen was dining at a local establishment there. When lo and behold, he runs into William Holden and Richard Widmark at the same restaurant. They were in this same locale filming Alvarez Kelly. McQueen and Holden wound up drinking all night together. Steve McQueen was known to drink a lot, take drugs, gamble, chase women, and in reality, he was pretty paranoid and immature, along with being very selfish. All this comes straight from his ex-wife, Neil, where she lays out an array of information about the untold story of Hollywood's bad boy. It's always been said that Steve McQueen slept with almost every leading lady that he co-starred with, except for two. I'm not sure who both of them are, but I'm positive that one of them was the actress that plays in this film, and that's Suzanne Plachette. We know this because in an interview, she states emphatically how horribly awkward their scenes were together in this film because they enjoyed such a platonic friendship since they first met in Hollywood, and he had kind of taken the role of big brother to her. The scenes in the movie made him terribly uncomfortable. Nevada Smith is overall a very good movie, whose classic revenge plot is well served by the great actors and the settings that surround it. Take a look back at this very well done Henry Hathaway film. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.